Imagine this. A stranger says, good news, I have a gift just for you. Now, to receive said gift, you must work for me for the next 30 years, show up five days a week, follow these strict rules, and if you're really good, I'll give you the gift. No one in their right mind would say, wow, so kind of you, because it's not a gift. Gifts are, hey, because I love you and stuff, here's this. It's all yours. We get what a real gift is versus a fake one. How does that equate to Jehovah's Witnesses? Well, the good news, or gospel, is the central theme of the New Testament. The gospel is the answer to the question, how can I be saved? The problem is, what Jehovah's Witnesses say the good news is, and what the Bible says, are two entirely different things. The Bible presents the good news as a gift, grace, undeserved merit, something Jesus gave us we didn't deserve. The witness version is a work contract. This is kind of important. If the Bible is true, then only the real gospel can save. So eternity hangs in the balance. I suppose it's worth talking about. Remember, Paul's letter to the Galatians. He's responding to the Jews who were preaching the gospel was grace plus required works equals salvation. Paul said anyone who preaches grace plus works, they should be eternally condemned. And that's just adding one requirement, in this case circumcision. So certainly adding any more requirements makes it also a false gospel. First, starting with what the Bible says, Paul gives us a clear definition of what the good news is. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Now I make known to you, brothers and sisters, the gospel which I preach to you, which you also received, in which you also stand, by which you are saved, if you hold firmly to the word which I preach to you, unless you believed in vain. For I handed down to you as of first importance what I received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and he was buried, and he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. Notice this here. The gospel, and you're saved by it, it's about Christ's death and resurrection, and it's of first importance, meaning everything else is secondary. Paul already mentioned this early in the letter, 1 Corinthians 2.2. And when I came to you, I proclaimed to you the testimony of God, for I determined to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. Again, Christ's death and rise, the most important part. According to Luke in chapter 24.47, Christ said this is the gospel, forgiveness of sins, and this news you should go tell everyone, which is fulfilling scripture, like Isaiah 53, the Messiah that would be crushed for our sins. By this act, he saved us by making peace with God. Christ died, sins are forgiven, that means we can be saved. Okay, what must one do to be saved? Romans 10.9, that if you confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Acts 16.31, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. Ephesians 1.13, after listening to the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation, having also believed, you were sealed in him with the Holy Spirit of promise. Acts 26.18, Jesus speaking, to open their eyes that they may turn from darkness to light, hmm, and from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among those who have been sanctified by faith in me. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9, for by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. To summarize, Christ's death and resurrection, paying for our sins by his grace, we are saved by that grace, Acts 20, 24. And to receive that grace, one turns to Christ, puts their faith in who he is and what he did. And that, folks, is why it's called the good news of grace. So, Do Jehovah's Witnesses teach this? No. No, they don't. First, let's get their definition from JW.org on what the good news of the Bible is. Eh, Let's see here. Something's missing. Nothing about forgiveness of sin, Christ's death, resurrection. But apparently the first importance to them is this new government that Jehovah will establish after he destroys all other governments, a.k.a. the world, on Armageddon any day now. Notice they're answering the big question, what is the good news? And they failed miserably. Not exactly teaching scripture, are they? But let's check an article. In this article, sin isn't even mentioned. Not forgiveness, Christ's death or resurrection, nothing. Okay, let's go to another. Let's see. Christ freeing us from sin is gone. To be fair, there is a tiny little snippet. It's a quote from Vines. But then the article proceeds to tell us what this good news is. And guess what? It's the new government that Jehovah will establish after he destroys all other governments on Armageddon, which could come any day now. And the only way to be saved is to be a Jehovah's Witness. So is that the good news? No. No. Look, I'm not saying there won't be a new heaven and a new earth, but it's missing the foundation of the gospel. It's like asking someone to marry you, and their response is, wow, that's good news. Now I can access your bank account. 
I think your concept of marriage is false. You should probably care more about the relationship than the benefits, right? See, biblically, the good news is primarily and near entirely about salvation. There would be no paradise without it. So let's see about the salvation part of their good news. Please, JW.org, tell us how is one saved? Remember, this is an essential part of the gospel and no works should be added. Paul said it himself. Let's see, titled Salvation, what is it, really? Well, we need to believe in what Jesus taught. All these things here, like, oh look, a new government. Fancy seeing that. I guess he taught there was no voting, and that he established a global teaching program, aka the door-to-door ministry or the preaching work, which, according to this article, is a requirement for salvation. So apparently, belief in Jesus, part of this gospel, there is a requirement to do door-to-door ministry. That's a requirement added to the gospel. Just let me sum up what they mean. Watchtower study, works, following rules, obedience to the org, the preaching work, all of these are works required to be saved. Witnesses can't deny it and will even admit their gospel is Christ plus required works equals salvation. That is objectively contrary to what scripture teaches. Now, I know witnesses will respond, faith without works is dead. Yeah, we know. Real faith has works. Fake faith doesn't. We get it. Works come out of a true desire and love for what Christ did. Again, the JW will respond, but we have to work out our own salvation. Yeah, finish it out. We get it. This is from Philippians, and just before in verse 6, it's God who begins and finishes the work, not us. It's God working through us. Look, it can be really tough being a Christian, but finish the race. Don't give up on God. You endure all the way to the end. The point is, the gospel has been given as a gift, and it's out of your love for the gift giver you live righteously. If you aren't doing that, it might be evidence your conversion was false, or just of the head, not of the heart. So, is the witness good news or gospel a false gospel? Oh yeah, without a doubt. The witness version says, do all these things, then you'll get the gift. The real good news puts the focus on Christ being the Savior. The false one, it's about yourself and what you can do, and of course, what you can do for the org. The Bible's clear. No one is saved by works, and adding even one makes it a false gospel, and those who preach it are eternally condemned. Just remember, rat poison is 99% cornmeal and 1% arsenic. Subtle, yet deadly. It's sad because the real good news is pretty amazing, but really sick people try to manipulate it, all to gain influence and power. The good news that's supposed to be proclaimed is that death is defeated. Christ has made peace with God because of what he did, and his grace covers us from all sin. He has given something we could never earn, no matter how many works we accomplished or rules we follow. The gospel isn't a free pass to sin. It's an invitation to have a relationship with God, be made right, and live in a way that's ultimately for our benefit. The best part? It's between you and God. No one else is required. And that's good news. But that doesn't fit when false teachers come around preaching, no, 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 it's Jesus and you need us too. Uh, nope. I'm safe in him who gave himself for me. Doubt you can top that.